right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from a sunny San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Alice Camper, who is in lovely Florida. How are you doing, Alice? I'm doing great. Thanks, John. Yeah, and, and uh, Alice is in the, the Boca Raton area of, uh, of Florida. Nice there area by the coast. Uh, hope you're getting nice weather down there as well. <laughs> we are. It's in the 90 yeah. degrees, so our walks are a little hot, but... Yeah, it's all good. And and Alice is an award-winning entrepreneur and with several sales training solutions businesses. Uh, she's been in this uh, business a long time. Has lots of uh, lots of rewards and awards. Uh, and today, it's she's going to talk to us about three actions to bust quota. And let's face it right now, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who are thinking that your quota is just completely gone now or blown to pieces because of the uh, because of the pandemic. Or maybe even before this, you were starting to feel a little bit uh, uneasy about your quota. So Alice is going to help us figure out how we can still hit those quotas, not just hit them, but bust them. So Alice... Uh, Let's start. What are what are some of the uh, so you've got three actions, but just let's start from a mindset point of view. You know, how should people set themselves up right now, salespeople during this uh, during this crisis, to get themselves in the right frame of mind to continue to push forward? <laughs> um, well, you have to dig down deep, and the the mindset. You know, I'm always a the glass is half full. You mm -hmm. know, even more than half full person. That you know. We will get through this history shown that we will get through it. Um, you've everybody's probably been in experiences where, you know, and, and not in work experiences, just life experiences mm -hmm. that really hurt them hard and they came out of it. So it's the same kind of thing as yes, we're going to do some things differently, expectations are different, but get the mindset that that yeah, you still have to keep a positive mindset. And that, you know, anything you do is better than not doing anything yeah. at all. Absolutely. And you know, I couldn't agree more. All right. So let's talk about what, what is the first action you can take? Well, I, I'm going to do it from two ways because generally okay. the three actions are for sales managers to take, take for their salespeople. And I know your audience is both the sales manager and yep. the sales representative. Absolutely. And so it's interesting because the three actions – when I talk about them from the sales manager point of view, a lot of times salespeople say, well, my manager doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know what? So train your sales manager. It's <laughs> our responsibility. It's interesting because in businesses, you know, again, you know, I may be dating myself, but companies really, uh, uh, more companies than not took a very active role in training their, their teams. Mm -hmm. And somehow I have noticed over the years, there's a, there's a shift and that the companies, not all com companies do that. And, what, and for the salesperson to sit back and say, well, until my company trains me, and that's the wrong mindset. The mindset mm -hmm. is we are responsible for ourselves. You're responsible for your own success. So yeah. take responsibility. And you can, with these three actions that if sales managers take these three actions and, and, and engage with their sales representatives, then the sales representative meets the end result benefit. And when I say the sales reps, go to your sales manager and ask them to do these three steps with you. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to underline that because I do think it's a critical point is that at the end of the day, we're all responsible for our own careers and we're all responsible for our own jobs. And that if you sit around waiting for a company to train you or to invest in you, it's great if they do, but as you say, some of them won't. So you've got to invest in yourself. And then just one other point is, one of the greatest skills you will ever learn is managing upwards. And I yes. think this is, and this is why I'm very excited about what you're going to say, because I think this is part of the managing upwards. Yes, yes, it is. So the th it's interesting. I used to put them in, in this order, that step one was, Joint field rides or joint telephone, if you're selling over mm -hmm. the phone, joint telephone listening training. And that's the first one because you can, you're as a sales manager, you have no idea what's really happening on the one-on-one -on -one conversation with the customer if you're not there. 
And when a salesperson comes back and says, this is what happened on the call, they're only telling you their perspective, what they remember. Yeah. And so I always, and the same thing it, it, on, the, on the phone. So when you do a joint, I call them field ride, whether they're in person or on the telephone, it's a joint sales call. And the whole purpose of the manager and the, and the sales rep wants this from the manager. You want them to be another set of eyes and ears, not to mm. sell for you, but another set of eyes and ears to watch what you're doing to give you quality feedback on how you can improve. And, and that's important because if you don't watch on the job training, and I liken that to sports, you know, mm -hmm. if, if a first baseman is having trouble on first base, the manager doesn't say, well, go read these books and <laughs> go practice them. They watch them. They watch them over and over and they give them a, a tip and they try that and they watch them again. So that's all firsthand on the job training. And yeah. we do it in sports and musicians do it, actors do it. Everybody does it except salespeople. Yeah. And, and, and you know, what's, in, what's interesting now is that uh, now is a perfect time, if you like, because uh, in many cases, they may have more bandwidth than they normally do. And that. And so, but to your point, you need to be proactive and maybe reach out to your manager and say, I would really like it if you would join me on some calls, as you say, in a coaching role. And then tell me what am I what's what am I doing good and what can I improve upon? But but be proactive because now is probably the best time because they probably have the bandwidth to do it. And not only is it the best time because this I just saw this quote from Dave Curlin of Objective Management Group. Mm -hmm. They surveyed sixty one thousand salespeople, and what they found is only forty one percent are suitable for remote selling. Mm, I could, okay. I, I could, I could certainly uh, um, understand that. That's for right. sure. So now, if you're in the position which we all are, although I've been selling remotely my almost my entire uh, mm. uh, consulting career, uh, which I didn't realize was an unusual feat to do, and you know, <laughs> but and selling you know six figure sure. mm -hmm. uh, coach, sales training um, over the phone. But but anyway, so we're so if you're a salesperson and you're not used to selling remotely and you're not used to selling in a video conferencing, it's all that more important and to have your manager with you. And another reason it's important in this pandemic world that we're in is it's a by having the sales manager there meeting the prospect or meeting the customer is letting the customer know that they really are important. <laughs> Absolutely. And so there's another, you know, plus to it. There's a plus to it pre-pandemic, mm -hmm. but there's an added value now. So yeah, and, I, and, and just and just to underline that, I think uh, with the, especially with the remote selling, uh, we, we've been doing it for a long time. And in fact, we run a, a largely virtual organization, so we've been doing that for six or seven years now. But it is different, and it is, uh, and bringing somebody else onto these virtual meetings is absolutely critical because. There's things that they'll notice that you never notice on your own, and there's ways that they can help you. So I really would encourage people. And you, then you'll find that that once you understand how to do it well, it, it's a great medium. Yeah, that it that it is. So so that's one. And another reason that that the field rides are important is the, that we have a three E sales accelerator method, and the three E's are to um, energize, engage, and equip. And in field coaching, you're doing all three of those. You are engaging with your sales representative and the sales representative is engaging with the manager. You're energizing them because you're getting some positive feedback and motivation and tips and tools. And you're, you're getting additional equipping mechanisms as well. So that's, that's important on the field rides. The second one is really interesting was the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we've mm. always encouraged sales managers to coach their sales representatives on a weekly basis. Now, some, some sales representatives you may every other week, maybe every three weeks, but the majority of the time you do want to make contact with your sales reps one-on-one. -on -one. And the sales rep should want this with the manager because every, you, you need to know where, where you're at and, and their expectations and your expectations and are they matching. But the other thing is with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's not, what did you sell for me today? Yeah, yeah. Not how many sales 
calls did you make today? It's what's going on in your world that you need to talk about that we can work together mm -hmm. and collaborate on solutions to the challenges you're selling today. Because even pre-pandemic, you had challenges on week one of the month that were different than you had on week two and week three. And your manager is the person you need somebody to talk to. We're not yeah. islands by ourselves. <laughs> and, and what I like about that too is, uh, is again, it's, it's getting better engagement going. But the point is, especially for sales managers out there, is now is a great time to learn how to coach properly. You're never going to get a better opportunity. You do have the, the time to do this now. Because coaching, because a lot of people confuse coaching with their only real experience of coaching, which may have been in high school with some crazy guy screaming at them or crazy woman screaming at them from the sideline, telling them what to do, do this, do that. And that's not coaching. Right. It, may, it works, hey, it may work for sports, great, but it's not going to work uh, for business. So really learn how to coach because I really do think that coaching is one of the greatest multipliers you can, you can, uh, uh, you can get. Yeah. So right now, so I'm going to interject our little four-step mm -hmm. coaching tool tips sure. on how to, how to have that coaching session from the sales manager and the sales rep. If you want to coach up to your sales manager, you <laughs> can do the same. First, start off with some type of praise or positive acknowledgement of something even if it's just their smile, just that they showed up in this pandemic, mm -hmm. okay? Second, the managers to ask questions. You wanna find, no talking from the manager, it's questions. What's going on in your world? You're like, right now I wanna know what are your personal concerns? What's going on at home? What challenges are you having with working from home? You know, how much time are you needing to spend homeschooling? You know, just ask general questions to find out about them personally and professionally. Third step is solutions. Now that you've mentioned some, you might have discovered some challenges, what are the solutions? And in the solutions part, sales managers, you do not have to have the answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so be quiet. Ask the salesperson, what solutions do they recommend? And managing up, I'm going to tell you this from the salesperson. When you go to your manager with a problem, walk in that door, pick up the phone today, mm -hmm. and have a minimum of two solutions, okay? Don't expect your manager to have your solution. Have two solutions that would, that, you're, that would be acceptable to you, and then you and your manager can massage them, can talk them through, and maybe, that, maybe come up with a third one from the conversation. But the third step is to have solutions collaborating together. Mm -hmm. The fourth is to set when time frame. When are we gonna do this by? What are our next steps? Come up with a time frame. And then the fifth one is when are we going to regroup again to rinse and repeat steps yeah. one through four again? Yeah, no, those are those are those are great, uh, great pointers on how to do this. And that's a great process. And I uh, hope everybody takes note of that because I do think coaching is 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 very overlooked to be honest, uh, and and so critically important, but it's the thing that got gets pushed to the side every time. Right. I mean, when, when these three things, I'm going to tell you a story. Zach was a sales manager. He was a sales rep with these seven people, ends up taking over as the sales manager. They hadn't filled his position yet. So he has seven sales representatives. They're at about 80% of target. And he's first time sales manager, deer in headlights. What do I do? So I said, any sales manager that listens to me <laughs> and does these three <laughs> things are guaranteed to make quota. So there, his team now is about 80% quota. He starts field riding with the sales reps. He has one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with every of them. And on Fridays, he had step three, which are skill boosting, um, mm. skill boosting little mini sales training, all 30 minutes or less, okay? In three months time, his team was 107% of quota wow. just by doing those three actions. So it's, it is that simple, which sort of no, just... No, I, I can believe, I can totally believe it. And I've been doing, and I learned this when I used to be, I was a sales rep, sales manager. I, I my sales manager, I was in a startup uh, a group, you know, I, a startup. Mm -hmm. So I immediately put these three things in place. Then my next sales manager position, I was in a turnaround. I had a turnaround in organization did these three same things as well. And they, and they worked, you know, while, and I was a school teacher. So I sort of took 
a lot of this came out of especially the three E method right. to you know to um, uh, engage, energize, and equip is what I really was doing as a school teacher. And mm -hmm. I just put it into my sales and my sales management. And I was a sales rep with a company, American Greeting Cards was my first selling position. And they did put us through professional selling skills for a week. And then that was it. So yeah. I was on my own. And the good news is I thought for me, I'm a voracious learner. So I just devoured everything and took the responsibility that I was going to be successful. Because I was also, the 10th woman in an 850 person sales organization. And I told myself failure was not an option. Mm -hmm. so I had to make sure it worked. So let's talk about the skill boosting meetings. Mm -hmm. um, as salespeople's attention span these days, really, you know, or I'd yeah. say, you uh, know, uh, you know, well, like ev everybody's, I think. And everybody's like an eight week yeah. old puppy dog. So mm -hmm. one of the things I realized also as I went on in my consulting business for the last uh, 38 years now, I think, is that, you know, I could train the sales managers how to do the field rides and how to coach the one-on-one -on -one coaching for the field rides and the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then when I said step three was to do mini sales training meetings, the pushback was, I don't have time. And the other underlying one that did come out was, I don't have the wherewithal on how to write a good sales training meeting, you know, mm. I don't, I don't have design background and I can, and I, they ended up standing up there telling the sales reps what they did and what they should do. And you know, when you tell your kids yes. what you did and what they should do, they don't do it. So it's no mm -hmm. different with adults. So a lot of sales organizations asked us to field ride and do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I would only do it as a supplement because I really, I like, the sales managers to be responsible, <laughs> not us to be responsible. Yeah. But the third one, I said, I can do this for you. And with all, so I went back and my team, we all took all of our big gun sales training that works and we broke it down into 30 minute or less modules and a variety, some 15 minutes, some 10 minutes, and the 30 minute is the most intensive. And I've, I have now, 104, you know, word for word, done for you, sales, your Monday morning sales meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you can re-talk and tell time, you can run a highly effective sales meeting that has the three E method that's going to engage your reps, energize them and equip them. And we find that the sales reps can use this information on the very next, they're all relevant. Right. They can mm -hmm. use them on the very next sales call. So whether you want to spend hours coming up with your own, I don't, I don't care how you do it, whether you use ours or you use your own, but just don't be a talking head. This is mm -hmm. how I did it. But use 30 minutes or less of once a week. Every other, Right now, in fact, my girlfriend's a sales rep for L'Oreal. And what they, what they are doing is their sales reps each have a requirement to listen to 10 hours, to engage in some way, shape, or form right. of 10 hours of, of educational learning. Now, a lot of it, they want it to be selling skills, but it could even be Excel spreadsheet yeah. learning. Yeah, um, and so like I said, there's you're not going to get a better time than now. You've got to, sometimes you've got to take advantage of situations and say, yeah, okay, maybe it's not ideal right now. And, um, you know, maybe I'm, I'm, you know, there's less going on than I would like. So instead of just saying, okay, I'll fill that time with Tiger King on Netflix, maybe you should fill it with uh, exactly what you're talking about is here is actually upskilling yourself and investing in your own future. Right, exactly. And the thing is, the other thing is, is and, and I think it's realistic. It's not realistic to expect the sales representative that's working from home now to be in the office from eight to five. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Matt, we can be productive in less hours. And there's a lot more going on in a household now with, with families, you know, uh, yeah. around. And I, and, and and I think at the end of the you started you know, I was going to say, I'm sorry, I was just going to say it. No, no, go on. I was going to just say at the end of the day, I think this is where you have to focus on results and you have to um, allow people the flexibility uh, yeah. with the working at home, how they do it, but just focus on the results. Because here's the thing, I guarantee you, you're going to see greater productivity. I just guarantee yeah. you that. Yeah, it will. And everybody's figuring out how to do it differently. And that's why this 
the sales manager's number one job now is to talk to your sales representative daily, every other day. And if you're a sales rep and your manager isn't doing this, then I encourage you to get on the phone and set up some appointments with them. Start out once a week with your manager, or, or I'd even suggest do it on Monday. Set your plan with your manager. It's like accountability. Mm-hmm. I have an accountability coach. I, you know, because I, you know, I have all these things I want to do, but I need somebody on Friday that I have to be able to say, I did them because mm-hmm. I found if I didn't have an accountability coach, I did some of them, but not all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're because we're all very good at being our own kind of <laughs> get out of jail free coach, right? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> This has been great, Alice. Do you want to just review the, the steps again for us before we finish up? Sure. The, um, three, the three actions that any sales manager or sales rep managing upward can take are field rides, you know, joint sales conversations with your manager, one-on-one coaching opportunities, and not just about what you sell for mm. me today, but what's actually going on in my world, the challenges and solutions to overcome them. And the third is to skill building is to equip with, with mm-hmm. many skill boosting uh, sales training so that you can perfect your sales conversations. Yeah, and I think this is this is great advice. And like I said, this is the you're never going to get a better time. So there's no excuse for for not investing in yourself right now because either either things are going to work out for you here and now with where you are, or afterwards you're going to maybe have to find something else or. But if you upskill yourself now, you're going to give yourself every advantage to be successful now or successful in your next venture. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, Alice, this has been fantastic. So all of Alice's information will be in her contributor bio so you can find out more. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more. Okay. Well, um, I've been in the... I've, well, as I met, sale, I sold, I managed, and I've been in the sales training consulting business for 38 years. And so our latest venture, this one is Sales Training Works, W-E-R-K-S. And this is for managers to uh, engage, energize, and equip their salespeople to sell more day in and day out. And it's a uh, all skill boosters, 30 minutes or less. And you can find it at Sales Training Works. And if it's okay with you, John, I did come up with a, uh, a promo for your uh, Oh, audience. Fantastic. And if they do go to salestrainingworks.com and you're interested in the mini skill boosters, then just in the uh, promo field, put in the word podcast and you get 50% off. Oh, wow. That's, that's very generous of you. I hope everybody in the audience takes advantage of that. I can, I can attest that this will, be, this will be the best investment you make is a little bit of investment in yourself. Stop waiting for other people to invest in you. Invest in yourself. Yeah. So I thank right. you. Yeah. I'm on uh, LinkedIn name, also with my name, Alice Kemper, Twitter at Best Sales Tips. Yeah, so there's plenty of ways of finding Alice. I said all of her information will be in the contributor, in her contributor bio. Listen, Alice, it's been fantastic. I really want to thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I wish you the best. Stay self, stay, stay safe, stay healthy. Yeah, I was going to say stay, stay stealthy, which is not a bad thing either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my name is okay. John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Okay, bye bye.